Ladies and gentlemen, a warm welcome to the Monkey God, Jared Brooks. Good to see you. You're on the back of a quality victory over Lito Adiwang. That was awesome. Couldn't have gone better. It, it must be always a nice feeling when not only you're on the back of a victory, but you put someone away like that. How good was that one? It was a great feeling, man. Uh, Lito Adewang is a great opponent. If you've studied him in the past, then you see what Lito is capable of. And uh, for me to do that to Lito, that's definitely uh, a step up in, uh, in competition. And uh, yeah, I'm just looking forward to what's in the future. Do you think you've proven that you're on a different level? Um, I think that, that I have a little bit more to prove, like as far as... Uh, who I am as a mixed martial artist and how I want people to perceive me as a mixed martial artist. But um, yeah, like time will only tell with, uh, with certain opponents, you know, uh, Lito Adewang is a, is a great striker. So, you know, you go on the ground with him and that's, you know, my number one thing. So, but if people uh, defend my takedown, then yeah, they're going to, they're going to catch something else for sure. How pleased are you in terms of a one debut? Was that the right kind of challenge for you? And do you think you made a statement there kind of to everybody else in the division? Um, I'm, I'm just looking forward to the future. Uh, I don't even think that that strawweight's um, going to be the future for me. I think it's flyweight. Um, I think that, you know, I have a little bit more growing to do. You know, I, I didn't even have to cut weight to, to get to 125. So. Um, but you know, I, I'm willing to, to grow and, and get bigger just to fight those, uh, those upper echelon guys and, uh, yeah, get, get, uh, bigger heads mounted on my wall. So what's the plan then? Have you, have you mapped this out for yourself? Are you planning to stick around straw weight or are you just planning to take the title and, and move on and, and try and get another huh. one? No, man. Um, it's, it's more of like, you know, I win the straw weight title. And um, I can I can take super fights, whoever they want me to fight. Like, I mean, if if they put me uh, against like three top five straw weights and I demolish them, then, yeah, put me put me up to flyweight. I think that that would be absolutely cool. I think that Adriano Moraes is, is a great matchup for me as well. He has a great submission game and uh, his stand up is no joke as well as you, you seen what he did to, to Demetrius. So, um yeah, I think he, he's he's definitely going to be on the list in the next few years. Hopefully he uh, he doesn't get beat by that. I don't think Adriano would. He's, he's actually a really good opponent. He's a, he's a good fighter. But uh, DJ, too, even. I mean, Demetrius Johnson, dude, that, that guy is like my hero. So fighting him would be, it'd be a dream come true no matter what. No matter the outcome. That guy is uh, is definitely like one of the reasons why I started mixed martial arts. So getting to fight him would be like a, like a I don't know. I don't know how it feels. It's crazy. <laughs> you fought once in Bellator and you won. Uh, how, what was the story there? How come, how come you only fought once in Bellator and off the back of a win? Did you decide it wasn't for you or was it kind of a mutual thing? How come it's unusual to fight once and win and then kind of move on from a big promotion? Um, it, it wasn't even that it, I was signed to Ryzen and Ryzen did a show with Bellator. Right. And so, so it was just a, a Ryzen Bellator event pretty much. So I don't, it was like a weird co-promotion kind of thing. I didn't yeah, know I if I was, if I was going to sign to any kind of Bellator contract or anything like that, but I was, uh, I did that fight signed under Ryzen. So, um, after Ryzen though, um, after I left for Ryzen, Corona hit. And then the whole country shut down. They're literally just opening it up like now. So <laughs> it's kind of crazy that, uh, th that I get into to one while, <laughs> while that's happening in Japan. But, but yeah, uh, it was a great event. They, they threw an amazing event. Is Asian MMA something that's close to your heart? Uh, it's, you know, it, not everybody from the States makes that move over to rise. And, you know, you've got the history with pride and everything. Is that something that was always kind of on your bucket list to do? Um, I just go whatever, what God takes me to, you know? So it's like, I'm just on this journey. Wherever I go is wherever I go and wherever I fight. I, you know, I don't make these, these calls and these shots. I wish I could. 
uh, I'd fight in the States every time. <laughs> but uh, but I absolutely love my Asian fans. All of my Asian fans are, are top priority to me. They've only showed me love. Uh, they showed me more love than anybody around the world. Um, actually, Cheshire fans. Cheshire fans, those guys are absolutely crazy. And I absolutely love my Cheshire fans as well. But, um, but yeah, I, I don't even know where I was going with that. But. How about the rule sets in Ryzen? You know, they have soccer kicks in one. You can knee to a grounded opponent. Is that something that speaks to you? Are you, are you down with the more permissive, the better? I'm going to have to adjust to that a little bit more. Um, I had a lot of knee, knee strikes that I could have done on the ground with Lido that I didn't do. So it's something that I definitely got to work on. And, uh, and even in Ryzen, you know, I was, I was working on doing it, but I didn't get a chance to do any soccer kicks or knees. I think that is really cool that you can do that. Um, being on the opposite side of that. Yeah, it sucks, but I mean, I'm, I'm usually on the giving side, so it's pretty cool. Your, uh, you know, your only losses in the UFC were to Devis and Figueiredo, who's, you know, maybe one of the best flyweights ever. And then, uh, you know, Jose Torres, who's got a really good record and, and gone out the UFC and done really well. And that was kind of an anomaly, the way you lost that fight. So do you think that your record is, is misleading in that way that you could actually be undefeated? It was a split decision against Davison, right? And then, and then you had no contest. Yeah. So do you think sometimes it's just a very small thing that could go either way and you know, your record is actually very impressive. It's kind of crazy. Um, like with Davis and Figueredo, um, you know, all of the, the people said that I won that fight. And, um, and, and it's still something that's still embedded in my head that I want, I still want to fight him, even though I feel like I won the fight, you know, um, just, just seeing him grow from, from where he was and, I feel like my fight and him were like at a standstill and who was going to get to the championship echelon or who they were going to pick to get to that championship echelon. So that's what fight I really, really would like to get back. If Davidson ever gets cut by the UFC or, you know, if we ever co-promote, who has to do it? I'm so down to fight Davidson Figueredo. Uh, Brandon Moreno, I'm not worried about that. Um, but yeah, I would say uh, Sh Shorty Torres. I don't even care about that. Like, I don't. I don't think that Shorty is that good. I just period. I feel like <laughs> I knocked myself out, man. I don't know. Uh, nothing against Jose Torres. I just don't think that he is like the the higher higher echelon of the 125 pound division. He he's taken too many hits throughout his whole career. He has literally been a a human punching bag but he he comes back and, and beats people you know he's 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 a good winner and he he knows how to win but dude you, there's wear and tear in the sport and um yeah i just <laughs> i don't think he's that good but davis p ray was good he is really good but that's somebody i just want to get that fight back but um yeah ufc ufc and i have have a past or whatever but i'm i'm just moving forward with uh with one and, and seeing where I can uh, push their echelons and mine at the same time. Well, I was interested to read that you want to be the Team Lakai killer. I think that's a really interesting angle to take because Team Lakai are, you know, intrinsic to one. They've had such a rich history in the promotion. So that's a really interesting uh, path. And Joshua Pascoe is the man think, holding the belt. I, wanna, I don't think I call myself, I, I actually said in the interview that I don't want to be known as a soccer robber you know, as that, but they, they are running one. Yeah. I mean, and I don't want to be the guy that goes in and, and beats the, the top two straw weights. And what if they put me up against Danny King death? Then I'm like, Oh man, I don't want to do that to team. Like, Hey, I have a lot of respect to those guys, but I'm, they can work on the ground game as much as possible. So can anybody else in the world. And there's just levels to the games. Of, of MMA, jiu-jitsu, MMA, wrestling, MMA, uh, kickboxing, MMA, Muay Thai, anything like that. There's, it's, it's a difference between the, the actual martial art and mixed martial arts into that, you know? So, um, <clears throat> yeah, I don't want to be known as that. I'm, I'm super sorry, Team McKay. Uh, I think that you guys are absolutely cool. I would love to train with you guys, uh, especially on the feet sometime. Um, not right now, unfortunately, but yeah, I, I think you guys are absolutely cool and absolutely great. But yeah, we're going to have to fight and get all this over with before that. 
so you think just in terms of the ground you have their number i think i think in just mixed martial arts you know uh, i have an iq a fighting iq that's a lot more than a lot of other fighters i've been doing this sport since i was 14 my first mma fight was when i was 14 so um looking at it from an outside point of view you know these guys are just now i mean they've been doing muay thai and kickboxing and wushu and, and sanda their whole life but they're not doing mixed martial arts they're doing one mixed martial art or they're doing one martial art out of mixed martial arts so uh they've, they've been doing that for like you know eight years let's just say lido has been doing mixed martial arts for eight years yeah i still have like a like 11 year bridge on them man like I don't know. I don't know how else to explain it. Pascio is the one you want, or is, is that is that who's in the sights, or are you quite easy as, as to who's next? Or you think that you beat the number five guy, is that, is that what makes sense, a title shot, or are you just taking whoever? Is there anyone else in the sights for you? I just, I don't, I think it's going to be, the problem with that is, I think it's going to be a standstill because there's going to be, you know, talks and people will be like, oh, do you want to fight Jared Brooks? And then this guy says, oh, well, uh, I would, but I have this injury or that injury or something like that. And people, people don't want to, you know, step up. And then, I, you know, I got to fight somebody that's out, out of the top five that isn't going to even make me like, you know, get sprung up for a fight or sell a fight, you know? Um, I want like either Bo Kong. I want somebody in the in the top three. Put me in the top three. Put me up against the rank number two or rank number one contender or Joshua Pascio. But I think that the smartest approach is just put me up against Joshua Pascio. I know he'll take the fight, and then the rest of the top five they're gonna be chasing me, so they're gonna actually want to fight me. You know. So um, everybody everybody's already fought Joshua Pascio. They already know how it is to fight Joshua Pascio, except for Bo Kong, and Yane, uh, and but those guys are right, just right above me. So see, put me up against them. It's an exciting time. What a breath of fresh air for the division and for the promotion. It's great to see you, Jared. Thanks for the chat.